This is a pre-built game called Reaction Timer. When the sound plays, the participants must press their designated button. The player with the fastest reaction time wins. In this tutorial, we will add to this program by organizing it into three distinct phases. A title screen, a gameplay screen, and an end screen. To do this, we'll use an enumerated type and a switch control structure together to make a state machine. This is Reaction Timer. Let's first shrink the code regions to make this easier to look at. Great. We will start by creating an enumerated type to contain values that will represent the distinct phases or states of the game. Let's create this enumerated type up near the top of the game. To create an enumerated type, use the keyword enum, and then type in the name of the type. We'll call it game state. Next, you have to give the distinct values of the enumerated type. We will have three different phases for our game, so let's create three different values for game state. We'll call it title screen, playing game, and end screen. And then close that. There's our enumerated type. We'll also create a variable to hold the game state and set it to the beginning game state title screen. Game state, state is equal to game state dot, and look how IntelliSense picked up the values that we already typed in above, and we'll go to title screen. Go ahead and pause the tutorial here and add this code. Great. The title of the game will need to be written with a larger font than the rest of the fonts in the game. So let's add another font file. Go to content, right click on it, click add, select new item, click on sprite font, and for this particular font, we want to differentiate it from the other font, so we're going to call it title font. And we'll add it. Now this title font needs to be a lot bigger than the other font. Let's change the size to 60. And let's also change it to bold italic. Excellent. Save that file. Close it. Great. Now what we need to do is create the variable to hold it and load it in the load content method. Right here is sprite font. Let's go ahead and create the title font variable. Let's go down to load content. Open it up. Right here. We're going to do almost the exact same thing. So let's copy paste it. This time call it title font. And instead of sprite font one, it is called title font. Great. Pause the tutorial and add and load the font. All right, let's close up load content because we're done with that right now. And let's go to the update method. The update method has a lot of code in it. Most of this code is used when simply running the gameplay part of the game. The next thing we're going to do is create a state machine in the update method. Let's first move some of the existing code into another method that will be called on later. You can go ahead and cut and paste the code into a method called update gameplay. Let's do this in a quicker way 
by refactoring the code and extracting it as a method. I'm going to highlight all of this code right here. And I'm going to right click on it, select refactor, and go to extract method. And I'm going to call the method update gameplay. Okay. What happens here is that Visual Studio puts the code into a method called update gameplay and makes it a private method because it's only particular to this class and puts a method call in its place where the code used to be. We're going to build a state machine around this method call. First we'll set up a switch statement for the game state enumerated variable state. Switch state Great. And we're going to set up three different cases because there are three different states. So let's create the first case. It's going to be game state dot title screen. And during the title screen case, we're going to simply update the title screen. Now I know what you're thinking, uh, where is this update title screen method? Well, during the title screen state, we will call on a method to update the title screen. That's this update title screen method. And I know we haven't made this method yet, but we will. Starting with the method call, which we've done here, and working backwards to the actual method code is a good approach. It allows you to think of the context in which your code will be used before you create it. Let's go ahead and break right there. The break is here to exit the switch statement. There's no need to check the other cases if we've already matched it up with one. Let's go ahead and create the other cases. And here we'll call update gameplay, which we already have. And we'll break. And then we'll create the last case. End the screen case. And we'll create a method that we have not, we'll write down a method that we haven't created yet. Update end screen, break, and voila, our state machine. Let's just add a couple more things to the update method to make sure that we can exit the game when we need to. Gamepad dot get state player index dot one. Uh, buttons uh, back great so our update method is done and this is our state machine go ahead and pause and add the state machine All right, now back to the state machine. The state machine checks the value of the game state variable state and decides which corresponding methods need to run. We use a switch control structure to accomplish this. This is a great way to organize your code and makes your program more efficient. For example, when we are at the title screen, the game should only be concerned with querying the button required to go on with the game, the start button. The gameplay update code is not run while we are at the title screen. All right, let's go ahead and create the update title screen method 
and simply query the controller to see if start was pressed. It'll be another private method. We'll call it update title screen. And make sure it has the same spelling as before. And inside it, we'll simply do one thing. If gamepad get state clear index dot one dot buttons dot start equal to button state dot pressed. We'll simply change the state to game state dot playing game. And that is it for the update tile screen method. Pretty simple. I mean, at the tile screen, we only care about one thing. We're only thinking about one thing. Is the start button pressed? If it is, we'll go on to playing the game. All right. Well, here is our update gameplay. We're going to have to do one little thing to it right at the bottom. Because when the game ends, that means the timer has hit 120. We need to switch the state of the game to game state dot end screen. Excellent. Now let's create the update end screen method. It's going to use some of the same code as update title screen. So let's just go ahead and copy that. Paste it here. In fact, it's the same exact code as the update of the title screen. Because at the end screen, we're going to give the user the option to restart the game by pressing start. They'll go back to the playing screen and they'll play again. Go ahead and pause the video and add the code for the update end screen, update gameplay, and update title screen. Now that we've created a state machine for the update method, we will need to create the corresponding state machine in the draw method. First, you can cut and paste the current draw code in here into a draw gameplay method or extract the method like before. Let's do that. We'll highlight it, right click, refactor, extract method. And we're going to call the method draw gameplay. Notice it did the same thing as before. It extracted the code, stuck it in a private method, and then substituted it with a method call. Now we'll code the draw method state machine. All right, let's add this state machine for the draw method. Switch state. And first case will be the tile screen case. And in that case, we will draw the tile screen. Then we'll break. And in the next case, which happens to be the um, playing game state, we will call on draw gameplay. So that's where this comes into play. And we'll break. And in the last case, which is the end screen state, all we need to do is draw the end screen. We don't need to worry about um, any of the title screen or gameplay draw code anymore. It's just the end screen draw code. And we'll break right there. And that is our code our 
state machine code for the draw method. Go ahead and pause the video and type in the state machine. Next thing we'll do is add the draw title screen code. Do that right here. Private void draw title screen. All right, on the title screen, we're going to display the title of the game, Reaction Timer, and we're going to include um, the instruction to press start. So a very traditional title screen. What we'll need to do is we'll need to center the Reaction Timer title on the screen using the title file. And we're going to use a special method of the sprite font class called measure string. And we're going to measure the width of the text reaction timer and divide it by two. Next thing we're going to do is going to create a vector2. We're going to call it center title vector. And we're going to make it a new vector. 400 minus that x value. So what we did is that 400 happens to be half of the width of the game window, which is 800 and we're subtracting half of the width of the reaction timer um, text. This way we'll be able to figure out where the left x value of the reaction timer text should go. And we'll just go ahead and put it at a y value of 100. And the next thing we need to do is use the sprite batch to go ahead and draw this text using the title font. Reaction timer using the center title vector, and we'll do it in color dot black. Next thing we need to do is the same thing for press start, but we're not going to use the title font. We're going to use the normal font for that, a smaller font. So we're going to need another center. That's not for the title, so we're just going to call it center x and center vector. It's going to be the normal font measuring the string. Press start. And let's take away that right there. It's going to be 400 for the width, but we're not going to put it at a y value of 100. We're going to put it at 400 near the bottom of the screen. And we're going to go ahead and draw it as well. So let's copy and paste that and change the appropriate parts to font, to press start, to center vector, and color dot black is fine. And that's our draw title screen method. Go ahead and pause the video and type up this code. And now let's deal with the draw end screen method. Draw gameplay is fine the way it is. Right below it, let's create draw gameplay method. I mean the draw end screen method. The code for the draw end screen method is actually going to look a lot like the draw title screen code. So let's go up to draw title screen and copy and paste this code. And now we're going to have to adapt the code 
to fit the end screen situation. So first off, let's take out this title word because it's not the title screen. And the second thing, we're not displaying a title. We're actually going to display the winner's name with the text wins next to it. So if it was Gamepad 1X, the end screen would show Gamepad 1X wins. Here, we are using this code to center it in the horizontal X direction. Let's also center it in the vertical Y direction. And to do this, we're going to use the, almost the same code as what we have above. And we'll paste it. And let's go ahead and change the title font to font, because we're not going to use the title font anymore. And let's change X to Y. All right, very good. Next thing we need to do is take out this title word and change it to center X. And instead of 100, we're going to center it in the vertical direction. So we take 480, which is the height of the game window, and divide, divide it by 2, 240, and subtract center Y, which is already, which is already divided by 2 to become center Y. All right, next thing we need to do is change this to font, copy this, and paste it down here. All right, and we got to change this to a center vector. And the next thing we'll do is add a some text to tell the person how to restart the game. So let's say press start to play again. Excellent. And let's rename this vector. And it's going to be 400 minus restart center X. And we'll keep it at 400. That's fine. And let's change this text to press start to play again. Restart center vector. And that should be it. Great. This would be a wonderful time to pause and type this code up into your program. And then we'll see it run. All right, let's run the game. Press F5. And here we are at the title screen state. And the game is only looking to see if the start button is pressed. Let's press start and the game will begin. All right, now we're at the end screen state. The gamepad 1A wins is displayed and we can press start to play again. So let's do that. And we'll go back to the gameplay screen. Awesome. Seems like it's working great. In this tutorial, you used an enumerated type and switch control structure to create a state machine to organize the different phases of your game. You can add more states to represent additional phases of your game, like an instruction screen or a pause screen. A state machine is a simple approach to organizing your code.